I'm Russ from Acuity Instruments, and today I've got a very unusual product to show you. We've developed silicone radiator hoses for the FK8 Honda Civic Type R that actually help the car to run cooler. Many FK8 owners can attest to the fact that the car suffers from overheating issues when pushed for extended periods like on a hot track day. We've seen this time and time again on our own race car, cars that we sponsor, and even first-hand accounts from customers. Before we start our little thermodynamics lesson, I want to talk about another feature on these radiator hoses that makes them beneficial for performance applications. Most street cars use EPDM rubber with fiber reinforcements on their radiator hoses. The FK8 also uses that construction on their charge air hoses. EPDM rubber is fine for most applications, but when you start to push the car harder and the under hood temperatures climb, you start to run into the temperature limitations of the EPDM rubber. It can start to degrade and cause premature failures, whether it be leaks or bursting or what have you. That's where silicone really shines. It can deal with about 100 degrees Fahrenheit higher temperatures consistently than EPDM rubber, meaning it's gonna give you more peace of mind when you're pushing your car harder in performance applications or if your ambient temperatures are very high. Now let's talk a little bit about how these hoses can help the car to run cooler. Next to me, I've got part of the cooling pack from an FK8 Honda Civic Type R. Right here is the charge air cooler, or as most people call it, an intercooler. It takes the compressed air from the turbocharger and cools it before it feeds that air to the engine. At the back, I have the water radiator that takes water coming out of the engine that's been heated from waste heat from the engine and cools it before returning it back to the water pump. Normally between these two would be a condenser that's about as wide and tall as the radiator, but a bit thinner. That rejects heat that's coming from the AC system, cooling the passenger cabin. Now it's important to realize that to cool the charge air, the refrigerant, and the engine water, you have to have cooling air from outside the car running through the heat exchangers. And that cooling air has to be colder than the fluid it's trying to cool. So the air going into the intercooler has to be colder than the charge air. The air going into the condenser has to be colder than the refrigerant. And the air going into the radiator has to be colder than the cooling water. If you don't have this temperature difference, no heat transfer can occur. That's why cars start to overheat on hot days when they're pushed hard. The air is hotter, so the heat exchangers can't reject heat into the air. What does this do? The engine doesn't stop making heat, the intercooler doesn't stop making heat, so the temperatures climb until there actually is a difference between the temperature of the radiator and the temperature of the ambient air that you're rejecting the heat to. By that time, your water temps have risen, your charge air temps have risen, and you're at a point where you may actually cause damage to the car from overheating. The key is to get those temperatures back down while still rejecting more heat to the ambient air. To do that, you need better components. One concept that you have to grasp to understand how these radiator hoses work is that there's a temperature profile on all of the heat exchangers, and those temperature profiles impact the performance of the heat exchangers behind each successive heat exchanger. The air going into the intercooler from the ambient atmosphere is all one temperature, but as soon as it goes through the intercooler, that changes. You see, the intercooler has the charge air come in quite hot on the right side, and then it cools as it goes across it to the left side. What that means is if you put a infrared camera on this intercooler, this side will look hotter than that side. What that means is that the air coming out of the intercooler on the back side before it goes to the radiator is not all the same temperature. On the right side of the car, it's actually quite a bit hotter than the air coming out on the left side. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, what about the condenser? The condenser works a little bit differently because it uses refrigerant it's more of a uniform thermal profile over it. So it actually works to average that temperature profile going through it, but there's still a thermal profile to it that can negatively impact the radiator. What's interesting about this is that the air coming into the radiator at the bottom of it is actually very close to the temperature of the water leaving the radiator. Because the temperatures are so close, the bottom of the radiator actually doesn't do that much to cool your car. And in extreme conditions, when you're really pushing the car and the intercooler is rejecting a lot of heat, it can actually heat the water before it goes back into the engine. Meaning the top half is cooling water, 
while the bottom half is slightly heating it, or at least doing nothing at all. That's obviously not what you want out of your radiator. You want to take advantage of every square inch to reject heat from the engine to keep everything cool and keep everything safe. So now the question is, how did we design radiator hoses that actually help the car to cool better? What we actually did was we changed the direction that the water flows through the radiator. In its stock format, the FKA flows hot water into the top of the radiator, which then goes down to the bottom and exits and goes back to the engine. The problem on the FKA is that the hot water comes in the top of the radiator where there's cool air coming in the front and the cold water exiting the radiator comes out of the bottom where there's hot air going into the radiator. This is actually thermally backwards from an ideal setup with heat exchangers. An aftermarket intercooler can make the problem even worse. Since they're designed to take more heat out of the charge air or the boost, the heat has to go somewhere. It goes into the cooling air going through the intercooler. What that means is the air coming out of an upgraded intercooler is gonna be even hotter than the air coming out of a stock intercooler, meaning the air going into the bottom of the radiator behind an aftermarket intercooler is going to be even hotter than with the stock intercooler. In our configuration with our cross radiator hoses, we flow the hot water into the bottom of the radiator, up and out the top of it. What this does is it better aligns the thermal gradient of the water in the radiator with the air going through the radiator. In our configuration, the hot water in the bottom of the radiator is hotter than the air coming out of the back of the intercooler. This means it can still reject heat to it. Then that water is cool and goes into the top of the radiator, which is exposed to even cooler air going through the grill, meaning it can reject heat still. What this does is it uses the surface area of the radiator more efficiently to reject more heat to the air going through it, meaning that the water gets to a lower temperature before it's returned back to the engine. We did some testing with Honda Performance Development on cars that had vented hoods, upgraded radiators, and upgraded grills that flow more air through them. What we saw was that on stock cars, we get a temperature improvement of about one degree Fahrenheit, meaning about a one degree F decrease in the water temperature going back to the engine. But as we tested on cars with more mods, we started to see more gains. We started to see temperature improvements as much as four and a half degrees Fahrenheit on hot days. What this means is we used the radiator more effectively to dump heat into the atmosphere by flipping that thermal gradient. All of this is to say that at some point, if you're looking to get the most performance out of your FKA, you're going to have to upgrade to silicone radiator. Why not choose a set that's been configured to get your radiator flowing in the optimal direction so you can extract every ounce of performance from any other cooling mods you have, like a radiator, vented hood, or vented grill. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you to push the performance of your FKA a little further. If you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to our channel. I'm Russ from Acuity Instruments, and I'll see you next time.